In this video, we're going to look at the basics of the masking process. Now, masking kind of goes hand in hand with selections, where unlike its selection counterpart, where you actually delete and actually do eliminate parts of the graphic, a mask on the flip side is whereby you can do a non-destructive selection of the graphic. So before I dive in, I just want to show you kind of previous versions of, okay, how did we do selections? So I'm working with the dog photograph here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into 100% and let's grab the rectangle select selection tool. I'm going to feather the edges, maybe, maybe 45 ish around there. And I'm going to select this area. And then what I'm going to do is select invert so that I select the outside and hit the delete key. So what we've done here is we have selected the portion of the photograph that we want. However, what we have done is a, what we would normally call a destructive selection. If I were to save this graphic, close down GIMP and then reopen and try to start working on the graphic again, those elements that I just deleted with the delete key are forever gone. Now you could say, you know, well, I have the original photograph. I'll just reopen it and redo my changes, which you can technically. However, this really isn't a, a good workflow, especially once you start getting into where maybe you have text or other images and filter effects going on on the overall piece. So what I'm going to do here is let me control Z and let's go all the way back and just start with our base graphics. So we'll go to none. All right. So here we go. A couple of notes when working with masks. Masks themselves are an additional attachment to the layer that you are working on that will only affect the elements that are on that layer. Another thing to point out is that a mask works only with the colors black and white. You don't need to concern yourself as far as different colors across the RGB or CMYK color scale. So first and foremost, I actually want to take you up to your toolbox here. When you're working with masks, friendly reminder, all the way down in the lower left corner for your foreground and background, you can just default to black and white. Normally, I like to set that first before I dive in and start working on the mask, and you'll see why here in a moment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to apply a mask to this layer. So what I'm going to do here is making sure down in layers now. So I have a layer called puppy and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that layer there. So you can see that I have that dark grayish color showing that I have the layer selected and it's kind of mid area in your drop down menu, but there's add layer mask. Go ahead and click on that. Now, We'll get into some of the nitty gritty here, but what I want to show you is right off the bat, you have several options as far as the selection or the mask is concerned. For right now, let's go ahead and choose white. And you'll see why in a moment here. And I'll go ahead and say add. All right. So you may be saying to yourself, okay, doesn't look like much changed here on my graphic. Well, that's because by using white, we are saying show everything. And that's what the color white denotes in a mask based working environment. However, I want you to take a real close look now. Notice down in your layers panel. Now what you also have down there is you have an extra little kind of rectangle next to the image sample there of your puppy. And you can actually, if you click on each of these, you'll notice that you get like a white outline as you click between the two. That's denoting what the active element is that you're working on. So just to show you an example of how you can kind of mess this up. So I, I have the puppy image selected and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to actually mask out some of the elements. And I'm gonna grab my brush tool and I'm gonna choose one of my brushes. And okay. I'm ready to start going ahead and kind of doing like a nice mask effect. So I might say that, sit there and say, okay, I'm going to start doing this. 
and you see what happens. I'm actually coloring over the animal. That's because I had the wrong element of the layer selected. So let me control Z that. So let's go ahead now and let's make sure that I have that mask selected. Now, if I come in and start working here, notice the difference here. I'm now able to start taking out some of the backdrop areas that I'm like, you know what, I don't really need. And you can get some really nice artistic effects going on here that number one, you're not being destructive to the graphic at all. So I'm kind of coming through here. We're doing big, broad strokes, you know, kind of take, I want to have bits and pieces of the background, but I don't want it to be end all be all here. So I'll maybe go through there and I'll maybe even take up the opacity a little bit more to kind of just come through here, so on and so forth. And then we'll kind of come down here. Actually, you know what, let me control Z. Let's actually take down the opacity. There we go, kind of do a much kind of lighter feel there. Not super opaque, but. Now, also I'd like to draw your attention once you've done that, take a look at what you've done over here in the layers. Now look at that mask icon that's connected to your layer here. You should now start to see the actual strokes, colorings that you did. And that's kind of the beauty of this here, because now what I can do is like I can right click, for instance, on the layer mask here. And notice now I also have some additional options here. So for instance, I can disable. Notice now the layer mask has a red highlight around it. That means that it's hidden right now. You didn't delete anything. Nothing's gone. You're just hiding it from view we cannot use our show and hide icons like we would for the actual layer itself. These mask icons have their own set of controls by right clicking on the actual icon itself. So I'm gonna click on disable so that I can see it. Now still staying on this though, you may be saying to yourself, you know what, uh, I took too much out of the legs here, or you know, I want the pause to be a little bit better. That's no problem. Remember, black hides, white shows. So now if I come in here and kind of start coloring in a little bit, just real lightly, you see how I'm starting to get some of that detail back that I lost. So maybe we come in here, maybe I take up the opacity just a little bit, try to fill that in a little bit more, get some more of the belly in there, more of the chest fur, and so on and so forth. So now I have the ability that I've gone through, I've made that mask, but the big important element here that you need to understand with a mask is that I have now gone and I have made edits and removed elements of the graphic without doing a destructive process such as deleting the actual element. So that's one way that you can do a mask. Now, let me show you one other way, and this will be good too because of the fact this will also show you that if you truly want to get rid of your mask item. So coming back over to my layer here, I'm going to right click on that layer mask icon. If you absolutely wanted to get rid of it, there is a delete layer mask. It removes the icon and you can see you've got your graphic right back again. Now, Let's say for sake of argument, maybe I want to come in here and do, let's try the fuzzy select tool. What I'm going to do here now is I am going to do a selection, but then save it to the channels, which we haven't really looked at much. So we've mainly focused on this layers panel, but we haven't really looked at the actual channels here. So you can see, first off, we have red, green, and blue as far as combining the different colors for our images. But you can also generate mask selections as far as a channel layer is concerned. And I'm going to delete that one here. So what I'm going to do is we're actually going to go ahead. We're going to choose the fuzzy select. Let's see if we can get kind of a neat selection going on here.
Okay, there we go. So I got kind of a nifty little selection going on there with the different colors. And remember your fuzzy selection, we're sampling pixels. And what I'm gonna do now is I am going to create a new channel. And I'm gonna call this fuzzy selection. And I'm going to initialize from the selection that I have currently active, and I'm going to tell it OK. So here you have just the selection hanging out here. Now what I'm going to do here is I am going to go under Select and None, and let's come back over under Layers. Now once again, what I can do here is I'm going to go ahead and right click and we're going to add a layer mask. However, this time, remember we did white last time so that we could see the entire graphic, but because we already made a selection using the channels here, it's recognizing that channel that I generated. So if I go ahead and add now, you can see that Okay, so it made my selection. I have got those bits and pieces still hanging out. But let's say though, okay, you know what? I actually changed my mind. You see, it actually removed the puppy and I'm like, oh, you know what? That's not what I wanted. So if I go ahead here, you actually have a couple of options. First off, what we'll actually do is, let's go ahead and actually delete our layer mask. And we're going to go ahead and add it again. But this time what I want to do is there is a little option down at the bottom here. Invert the mask. And we'll go ahead and add. And there we go. So now we still have our dog present. But you notice now we've got kind of this nifty, kind of foggy-esque look going on as far as the selection goes. So that's another element that you can use, again, as far as making selections. So now I could add like a background layer with a different color. Maybe I want to have like, you know, a woody, you know, like a forest background, things like that. All of which are great options as far as adding effects. Final note, as far as if you want to play with channels and use channels to store layer masks for you, just because you did the selections and committed them, that doesn't mean now that, for instance, if I come in here now having that mask attribute selected, that doesn't mean that I can't come in here. And if I take up my opacity here a little bit, you can see here, that doesn't mean I can't come in and edit this. I'm still able to come in and add additional changes. So while the channel may get me started, you can still come in and actually tweak a little bit as needed. And that right there, folks, is the power of masks inside of photo editing programs. You're able to make selections and remove elements from an image without actually destroying the pieces of the image.